welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And now today we're going to have another a look at another variant Sudoku from the recent World Sudoku Championships. This is another I didn't try during the event. Um, it's a 40 point puzzle called Quadro. So at, this, at the event I would have had to have been doing this in about four or five minutes to be really on pace with the leaders and then at my pace about seven or eight minutes, I suppose, um, to, to make it worth doing. So not a very huge point of puzzle, but quite an unusual variant um, for one of the earlier rounds. Now, as well as following the classic Sudoku rules, it says in the instructions, there must be at least one even, at least one odd digit in every two by two adjacent cells. Now that might bear a little more explaining what it means is that in every two by two square in the grid, so either these four cells or these four cells or these four cells, so any two by two square, it's, there's at least one even and at least one odd. So they're not all even and they're not all odd. Now, that's probably going to be more useful um, with the odds, which you obviously have um, more of those in the grid than the evens, but it's an odd constraint. I think I think what we have to do to solve this is basically work off normal Sudoku rules, particularly as it's a low point in puzzle, um, until we suddenly need the constraint, and that may not we, know, we may not even need it all that often in the puzzle, just once or twice perhaps to finish it off. But we'll see how we go. So having a look at these fives. In the middle boxes, the only five position in the bottom column must be in the bottom box here, must be there. Um, similarly with fours in the end here, a four must go there. The only place left for a six in this box is there. Um, and this is just normal Sudoku rules, remember that, that I'm following here. Um, I could certainly put in some possible digits as we spot them. Ah, oh, that's quite a useful pair actually of sevens and fives. So that rules, rule, now that those sevens and fives must fill those cells, there aren't many places left for the eight. The one must be either there or there. And that's a one there or there. Um, there's not all that many shoots here of numbers. Ah, oh, one at the top must be there. <coughs> so now, what next? Um, it's easy to see what to do, but this is interesting here. This can't be a seven because of the constraint. Or a nine, in fact, or two or four. In fact, the only possibility left here is a six. If you, you can see, we've got two, three, one, five in the box, four in the row, eight in the column. That leaves seven, nine, and six. And if this was seven or a nine, this four by four cell here would be a single, would be a two by two um, cell of all. So that must be a six. So that is, you know, this constraint's been useful quite early on there. And that helps fix. I think we're done with sixes now. They're all done. Um, and I mean, again, as I say, we may not use the constraint all that often, but it was certainly very useful there straight away. Fours down. Sorry, that's not what I intended. Sometimes in Hadoku, but as it is, you have to press quite hard to get the number of a cell. Four more, and then four up here must be in the top row. <coughs> um, again, I'm not really, I should probably be looking harder for two by two boxes, but They'll be more important if we can get a bit further once we get to a three cells in every four by four box field. Um, four 
one six six two must be either there or there. That's what I'll fill them in. <coughs> I mean if you did spend your life time looking for possible two by two boxes of the same parity, um, you'd you'd look here and see eight six four, ooh, that can't be a two, but in fact we kind of know it can't be a two because it's either a seven or a five already. So you could waste a bit of time just looking for the possible cells where where that's going to happen. And two, three, six, one. Let's make it an interesting cell for this. It's quite unusual puzzle in some ways to solve like this. Ah, oh, we've got the one fixed in that row. So that must be the two, these must be one, nine in that order, and that's quite helpful. That puts the two there. Two, two, four, six, eight, one, seven, that's the only possibility left in that cell. And that fixes the five and seven down here. There's nine, that's four and nine, which is always powerful to have a pair together. That makes this seven and eight. Six one five. One of those is a two. Don't know about threes and nines in those bottom areas, unfortunately. Yet these is a one. Ah, oh, now this is quite interesting in this box here. Where does the two go? Well. It can't go there or there, and the reason is because that would only leave odd digit possibilities for these two, because four, six, and eight are already gone in this box. So two can't be there or there. We can see it can't be there because of the two here. So the last place for a two is there. So again, the constraint has proved surprisingly useful there. And um, that, that gets us going again in a way that you know, possibly we weren't expecting to be using the constraint quite as much as that. But it's, sorry, that's not what I was trying to do. What's the number there? That's, that's five or eight. I'm trying to go put the two in there. These two are seven and three in some order. This is eight and five up here. It must be like that. And we're going along quite nicely now. See why this wasn't perhaps a very high graded puzzle, but it's nice to be able to get through it reasonably quickly. And eights are in columns one and three there and there, so up here must be the column two eight. That's fixing our five. Three, but I don't think it does necessarily. <clears throat> we might still need the constraint one more time, perhaps. Sure, I can see where it doesn't disambiguate those or those. I don't think that must be odd. No, I'm not sure. Just need one more bit of logic and we're probably going to be done there. Um, twos, fours and nines. Sorry if you can see it already and I can't. That one's definitely odd. Just not sure. That's either a three or a seven. Six, four. Oh, I just can't see what to do next. Ah, oh, I don't know. That could be full. I thought there was something going on with these two cells, but they can't. As long as one of them is even, that's okay. And I can't tell which one that will be at the moment. Now I'm having this kind of gap. I'm glad I didn't try the puzzle live because this would be annoying under actual tournament conditions. Um, 
must be missing something. Come on, what am I missing here? One of those is a seven. One is also in the same column in that box. some help from the, the parity constraint and I can't see it. frustrating to take so long about that. Um, hopefully that gets us through the worst of the problem, although it would have been nicer for the four to be there for me. Um, no, maybe that. That isn't just the complete fix I needed. Two or nine there, two or nine there. If that was a nine, this one would have to be even. That doesn't prove anything. Uh, sorry, this is getting a bit dull now, but uh, again, I, I must. You know, it's it's very hard to check every two by two box, and that's probably the problem. Here we go. Can't be a four here because two six two eight four. I just haven't been looking for even ones enough, so that starts um, fixing everything. I think. Sorry, not hitting hard enough to get in the cells. Um, that's two three. We are finally finishing off. Um, yeah, I mean, we needed that constraint about four times to to complete this puzzle, and that's that's quite clever setting. I think it's more times than I had thought would be necessary um, in a in a puzzle with quite a few givens, and it made it pretty hard. Um, it meant you had to keep looking for the constraint, and that, that's quite a tricky thing to do with an odd constraint like this. So that's finally getting us to the end of Quadro Sudoku. Um, if you are understanding the rules and guessing ahead, I suspect you did better than I did there, and that's fair enough, but there's the solution. Um, an odd variant. I'm glad that one doesn't come up very often. Um, and I haven't, haven't done very well there, but at least we've got to the end. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Do let us know if you want to see more variants, because I do think they're quite interesting. And I um, hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.